um, a bit there. I want to see for a moment from, I'm doing my list here. Good evening. Sorry. Oh, here we go. <laughs> on Zoom. So it's just Keith and Brian. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. Fair. I have a very gentle bone to pick with you. Sorry? I have a message from my ex-wife to say you're following her on Twitter. See, so I'm following who? I cannot hear. I'm sorry. No, I can't hear. I think there is a problem with the audio in the room. Yeah, I think so. Michael, do you want to just repeat what you said? He's free. It's... problem with the mic? Yeah, well it is working now. It keeps it going off. Yeah. The problem is it's giving a feedback, you know, it's like an echo. Yeah. It's yeah, that's all. Yeah. The trouble is you can't go in the other room. What if we can go in the office? Something. We, yeah, it's just limiting the people spreading between three, four, five. Yeah. Can they hear back? Yeah. So I can hear like a relay. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, fine. Okay, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's. Yeah. 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 Sorry, can you just Right, let me just let the um, other people in. They're all from Bradley Radio, or some of Catherine is from Bradley State Radio. John, please come. Centre, which is again outside of our limit that we don't own the sports centre 
and I don't know what that can or can't be done. Um, and I have sent her an email to ask her to give me a call. However, um, that hasn't happened, um, so therefore I can't really pin down anything more than what was more or less that was what I put in the email. Um, so that's all I have from submissions from the public. So, um, Sure. Yes. Okay. And I just want to point out that, you know, the last Lashona Youth meeting, I pointed out the next Community Engagement Forum meeting on the 10th, because I was perceived that our meeting is on the 17th of March. But right now, because of the our full council meeting is on the 10th of March, we actually moved it forward and it will be on the 9th of March. So you can mark it the 9th of March. Tuesday, we have the community engagement forum meeting, so everyone is welcome to attend. Is it starting at 7 o'clock, Tom? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, lovely. Thank you, Tom. Um, right, uh, apologies for absence. No. Yeah, no apologies, apart from possibly Elaine, which will come on in a second. Um, applications for dispensation by counselors, are there any other dispensations? Uh, decorations by members of the local government. <laughs> so next brings me on to announcements from the chair. Um, now the only announcement which I have, which is in front of me, is um, I've been asked to read this out from Elaine Hardwick, and it starts. Um, I'd like to thank the residents for their support in voting for me in the last three local elections, giving 10 years being your voice. Sharon and the office staff, thank you for your hard work and we will be missed. And we'd like to thank Sarah Messenger and her gang for taking up the big project Bradley Stoke Room, which I managed to persuade by talking a load of rubbish. M must have convinced her to shut me up. It did take me three attempts. When I was mayor of Bradley State, one of my main achievements was to push and convert the tennis courts in Brookway uh, into further car parking. We took a while to get off the ground, but we got there in the end. I would like to thank Ben for your support over the years and Fab, the newcomer, I enjoyed mentoring you on the ways of the council meetings and the Jenny for sticking by me in good friends. We moved to a rural, rural area, area in another county. Therefore, I am no longer able to represent the residents in Bradley State. Therefore, as of today, the 20th of January, 2021, I have resigned from council. Um, all I'd like to just add to that is um, whatever political views one has, um, she did serve on the council for 10 years, and I think um, we should just record a vote of thanks for her. Um, So that's that. So I don't have any other announcements at all from the chair um, from since the last meeting. So we move on to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 18th of November 2020. Yeah. Hello. Uh, Hello, Chair. Yes. Yes, Tom. Okay. Uh, the on the on the last minute. 7.6, the proposed amendment to standing order 42. Yeah. So that was uh, 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 was originally proposed by John Ash. I seconded it. So uh, if you want to make it accurate, Sharon, just for your information, following discussion. Oh, well, so John proposed it and you seconded it. Yeah, that's what. But in the minutes, it came up as mm -hmm. I proposed and John seconded it. So. Okay. So I think we'll change that with that amendment. Uh, yes, I, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, I'm happy to. Amendment, I think Bobby's proposing. Yeah. Um, yes, we can do it. 
come second in the minute. So all those who, who were present and deemed them to be a correct record will take them for their assent. Yep. Um, so that is. Sharon, you're really gone. Hang on a minute. Right, we're back. Um, so is it. Is, can we have extensions, please, then? Extensions. What else? Well, I think Tom seconded it, so... Yeah, yeah, I seconded it. That's what I'm saying. Tom. No, that is actually for that. <laughs> yeah, I think, Brian, did you abstain? No, yeah, I didn't put my hand up. Uh, <clears throat> um, I was uh, looking at the computer and I didn't put my hand up. So, if you want to put me in as agreeing with that, that's fine. Okay, so um, the only other one I didn't see of, uh, was John Ash. Was it gone? Is it gone? He seems to have disappeared. That's because Zoom is really good. It's a problem with the computers, maybe so. I must my time with Zoom, it's much, much worse, uh, really, really bad sometimes, um, but I do manage with it. But uh, Teams, I reckon, is great. And it's right the way with you. I only reckon is that Teams is terrible. <laughs> Zoom, brilliant, but he's not here now, so <laughs> perhaps he's got it bad as well. <laughs> Anonymous for everybody who was, who voted, but yeah, as I say, I don't know where John's gone. So, I'm just gonna walk down here. Just have a lot of people on here not wearing masks. I'm not quite sure what it is. Yeah, 
Is because we are two meters distance? Yeah, I was a bit worried, you know. Uh, oh, I got my two out earlier, and we're yeah, going to protect me, you know? So, what? Keep wearing one. Uh. <laughs> I don't know where Don is like that. It's not in the water. No, it's nobody in the waiting room. Uh, a bit strange. Oh, bro, I missed this. Oh, I'm on page 41. strategic planning meeting 7.11 next stage skate park development including equipping interior of containers completion of landscaping project tools and equipment um, no update at the moment okay seven by two recommendations from the strategic planning meeting reference pages core activity center Replace damaged grass, oblique ground in preschool play area with artificial grass to allow outdoor play all area all year round. I think you you sent something out, didn't yeah, you, good. Del? Yeah, we with reference that um, we we haven't managed to do that as just yet, and it, it, we've got no complaints. Yeah. Right. Uh, next one is uh, seven point two two Bayless Court Activity Centre. Play area uh, design and install new play area to replace existing. Um, grant application was submitted requesting 50,000. Trustees have looked into application. Um, so we're waiting for a decision on that. Okay, hopefully by the end of January or 19th of January. Oh, it was yesterday. That was yesterday, yeah. The trustees meeting was yesterday, I think. Have, have we had an answer from that? I don't know. Okay. Jessie, now you haven't heard anything yet from them? No. No, okay. Um, hopefully, we'll have a response, hopefully. Um, 7.3, recommendations from the strategic planning meeting, uh, redevelopment of the Brookway Activity Centre main building. Um, the main building, no meetings have taken place as further, so that's, that's ongoing. Okay. So, um, 7.4, um, 21-22 Bradley Stoke Radio Lease Review. I think we've got that in our agenda pack. Um, we do have, there are references to the Bradley Stoke Lease Review and the meeting. Um, there was the one question I had on the account. Um, oh, here we go. Um, yeah, on the uh, last page, the Bradley Stoke Radio Limited uh, detailed profit and loss account items for the year ending 30th of November 2019. Um, it says exceptional loss on the disposal of investments. Six thousand five hundred and twenty-seven pounds. 
Can you just explain what that is? Um, yeah, 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 sorry, I'm here. I'm just getting my copy of our accounts out because obviously this is just, you know, you've just asked me that question. Uh, exceptional loss on the disposal uh, disposal of investments. Yeah, so, six, uh, uh, yeah. I'm just inquisitive what that was. Um, so that, that, that's uh, Paul, uh, quite a big proportion of your income. Yeah, so some of that is um, natural losses as equipment becomes obsolete um, and has to be replaced. So it's a de depreciation of the value of some of our equipment over time. Okay. We've increased from last year. Yeah. From two hundred and four hundred and nine pounds. Yeah. There was some depreciation is an exceptional loss, is it? That's just a, a natural Yeah, some years <laughs> there isn't a you know, a, a depreciation and things needed replacing. In other years there's substantial So what so what why do things needed replacing to create that figure? Um, well, there was quite a lot of equipment that needed um, replacing and, and updating, so we're um, talking about the uh, servers needing some replacement, um, other computer things that, that go on in that box. Um, the transmitter is was at the end of its life, so that's been something that's needed to be replaced. Um, yeah, various things. Obviously, they're not listed individually, so that's quite a difficult question to answer. Um, yeah. Go back, you know, a year. Um, but yeah, there there are there are losses uh, of equipment over time. Yeah, I so think we uh, we already uh, sanctioned the four thousand pound grant aid at the. Yeah. yeah, it's not the, yeah. so if you remember, in the November 4th Council meeting, you um, deferred a decision on how much the radio 21, 22 annual release would be mm -hmm. um, until after the... I'm not sure if everyone's got the same thing, but I can't hear. I just lost them as well. Yeah, it disappeared. Darren, you can't hear you again. It just, it just don't do it. You should do it right now. You would end up there. Yeah, it is. Hey, why you speak up there? And that's moved to the webcam, so obviously it's... I've just moved the microphone, so hopefully it's more central. So we, we hopefully everyone will be able to pick up if they speak up. Yeah, you hear Can you hear us now? Yeah. It, just went, it went from nothing, it went from totally clear to nothing, so it was like a fault as opposed to not just not being in the right position. Yeah, it was, it was dropping it, out. yeah the microphone keeps dropping out. Yeah. But it's yeah. linked to video cap the webcam as well, so I think we might need to get a new webcam because we've had that one a few years now. Can I just ask, we, uh, we haven't agreed the thousand grant yet, have we? We did it too. Yeah, that was agreed in um, yeah, later in the This is just looking at the rent for how much rate the Bradley Stoke Radio lease charge is going to be from 1st of April onwards. That's what you're looking at. It's going to be the same as last year. Mm. How much was it last year? £850. Um, 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 the ratio is up to be up to the city chosen. Uh, but in the report, so... It's in the report here. Um, yeah, it currently it's eight hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah. Can it be the same well, as yeah. this as for the next year? It said it was agreed as a fair uplift. So who who agreed at that point? Yeah, that was that was last year, that was twenty twenty one. Yeah. All right, we'll get, uh, now we're looking to twenty one, twenty two, yeah. Yeah. Well I would suggest that 
same as last year, a freeze on the an yeah. increase. Would you be happy with that, Catherine? Yeah, yeah, of course, that would be um, more generous of you. Yeah, we, we, we'd like it to be frozen just because although, you know, we have exclusive use and all our equipment in those rooms, we obviously can't open to the community and it is a difficult year, has been and probably will be this coming year, so um, we'd really appreciate it if, you, if we can keep the rent at 850 So I think that was, Roger proposed it and Michael seconded that, I think. Yes. Yeah. Um, John, John is saying that the meeting is totally disjointed with audio and visual problems. How can we discuss budgets like this? I think we'll let's just see how we get on, I guess. Is, is it any better now, John? No, uh, we just had a rejig of the room. Well, well, the trouble is the audio keeps going on and off, the video keeps freezing, and you can only hear like two thirds of the sentence. Now, if I'm the only one who's suffering from that, then fair enough, I'll put up with it. But I would think a lot of people have got the same problem, because my internet signal, my Wi Fi, is showing full strength. So, are other people suffering like this? Bam. John, is it this room that keeps on freezing, so you get video issues from this room? Yeah, I think it probably is. So I think it's linked to the video camera. Well, I suggest, could I suggest that we put off yeah. our video then? That will not affect it, that it will bring my freeze. So what I'm saying is, is I'm sat here with a laptop on that's just showing videos. If I turn this one off, it gives, um, gives Sharon more bandwidth for the meeting. So there's no need for me to do this, so I've turned that off. And the, the main issue we've got with the microphone is unfortunately, for some unknown reason, it keeps disconnecting from Sharon's laptop. So it's not really where it is or how loud we're speaking, it's just unfortunately we keep losing the connection through whatever reason through the webcam. Right, I can't see how we can discuss important items if we're only hearing two thirds of the story. To be fair to, be fair to Zoom though, we had a, a South Gloss Council meeting using um, Microsoft Team, and that was as crap as this was. And we were talking about millions of budgets, and you just couldn't hear half the time. And I, and I wasn't the only one to complain either. Just I, I'm not sorry, I don't know what the answer is, Mike, to be fair, but this is a ridiculous way to cap on. Should I turn mine off as well? Turn yours off. Yeah. Uh, John, hopefully, if I turn mine off as well, um, that will uh, uh, hopefully... Why don't we all turn our videos off? Will we have... No, it's something else. Yeah. We, right, we, we turned all our own personal laptops off so that hopefully we've got a better signal going out to you. Yeah, okay, I understand. All right, so, yeah. uh, um, okay, let's progress with the meeting. So hopefully, John, you won't suffer too much. So, right, let's, um, so we'll move so on. So Roger proposed and Michael seconded on the £850 pound for the radio. Pound for the same lease as last year. Yeah. So those in favour? Keith. Keith, are you in favour? No, I didn't hear what was said, so uh, <coughs> I think you might. If you say it again, I might agree with you. Uh, is your name is Brian. Is your name Keith? I'm listening. I've got the ears out, but. Yeah, Keith, so it was to agree the, the Bradley Stoke Radio lease budget of £850, so freezing the charge for the forthcoming year. Okay, um, yeah, I sort of thought we were still talking about John and team, so uh, yeah, that's right. fine. yeah, I agree with that, thank you very much. I tell you what, we ought to really say thank you, you can say you've had a really bad year, but you still kept broadcasting, and um, you know, we've had some really good programmes on, they've been doing a good job, it's been very difficult for them. Okay, so let's move on to the next item. Uh, 
So we won't ignore that then, will we? No, 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 we, we've taken on board and that's why we've frozen the, uh, the, the release. Oh, yeah, because you appreciate that's why we've done it. I'm just saying, I think we could appreciate, you know, just say thank you very much for continuing in all this really hard time. That's what I was saying, but if you want to cut me off on that, that's fine. No, no, at all, Brian, you've said it. <laughs> I don't need to repeat it. I don't want anybody else to say it, that was all. <laughs> all right, all together. Brilliant. <laughs> Um, the next one is to adopt the Bradley Stoke Town Council Volunteer Policy. Um, I you, hope you've read this from your agenda pack. Um, my question was... Um, Uh, basically, where did this come from? Uh, so this is a combination of the SLCC, their draft... What's SLCC? Society of Local Council Clerks. Yeah, yeah. 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 And? Um, and um, it's similar to other um, parish uh, town councils who have volunteer policies in okay. place. Okay. Because okay. a lot of them have used the... The template one. Um, my next question is for the um, DBS checks. Um, who pays for that? Because usually there's a charge for that. Um, yeah, we would pay for that through the um, no. youth, youth. Yeah. If, if it's a volunteer, South Gloss is the umbrella body. We'll do it for free. Okay. There you go. Okay. How many volunteers do we have? Can we can we actually make that into the policy that it's South Gloss that pays it? Yeah, we pass it. Karen, you can do that, but South Gloss may change the yeah. policy. We have no control over it. Karen. Then, then that's a valid question I made. Who's going to pay for it? Karen. Yeah. Yes. Are are those DBS checks done through Integra? Has. I don't know. It hasn't been explained. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's been for in this draft. Right. Are the DBS is done through Integra, through South Gloss or not? Not that I'm aware. We just go through South Gloss using them. They give an online link to the individual. We then do an ID check and then it comes out that account to the individual. Is that, is it, is that as if they've got their own DBS online already because they have one? Or are we having... No, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a new check we're talking about, new, new checks. I Normally, I, I would check it with Integra because there is new policy on that. Chair. Sure. Yes, uh, Tom. <laughs> yeah, my question is, how many volunteers we have? Because right now, um, Char mentioned that it's because of the SLCC template that we put up this one. This one to know how many volunteers we have and to see whether when we are passing it, the need for it and to and to actually look into these kind of things, the charges and other things. Because that's where I was thinking. How many volunteers we have? That's uh, um. Jason, he's got a few volunteer um, litter pickers. I mean, obviously, they wouldn't need the DBS checks done. That's only if you're working directly with children, young people, and vulnerable adults. So litter picking around the street, you wouldn't need to have a DBS check done. So there would obviously be no cost involved to that. And we supply the litter pickers and the bags for that. What, what what if they were in and around a school? Well, they wouldn't be in a school because that's well, the problem. Well, around the around so, school. Yeah, we wouldn't, because our letter assistants, unless they directly work with children and young people, they don't have DBS checks done as a matter of course. Mm. Yeah. Can I raise um, a point? Yes, of course, Terry. Um, under expenses, it says... Um, the council believes that volunteers should not in any respect suffer financially by volunteering. 
um, out-of-pocket expenses must be claimed within three months and receipts produced where possible. I think we should remove where possible and say that it's um, you know, mandatory. Yeah. mandatory, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, just take out the word possible. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, just put um, must be produced and receipts must be produced. Yeah. You know, because either they put a, a receipt in or they don't get the money, so that just makes people, you know, very, very, um, you know, um, determined to, to make sure their records are correct. And what, what is the out of pocket expenses likely to be? Pardon? <laughs> Is that like fuel for cars? Oh, yeah, exactly. It's, it's for, for open ended. Yeah, for volunteer litter picker. Sorry. Oh, I did some litter picking. I never claimed any mileage. I think it's volunteering. It's volunteering, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, if you're going to buy a, you know, a sort of a, a high vis jacket or something like that, that's a different thing. But, you know. Where does, where does volunteering stop and employment, even like even um, on a unofficial basis, start? Well, I think I think that's a good point, Tony. I think we should know precisely what volunteers could um, be likely to claim that would be you know that would be um, accepted and. If they do, if, you know, once we've decided, once we've confirmed that, if they do um, claim anything, then they have to produce a receipt to prove it. Yeah, and at this moment, so, uh, uh, the only aspect I can see what has come forward tonight, what the volunteers are going to do, is litter picking. So why do we need a policy just for litter picking? I mean, if you can't come up with any other valid reasons what the volunteers are going to do, apart from litter picking, yeah. I, I, think I, I could give you some valid reasons. For example, people who are volunteering with uh, youth work on a regular basis. Um, and in terms of Terry's point, uh, all we were doing was following good practice guidance that anyone who volunteers and gives their time for free, it shouldn't be to their detriment. So, for example, if someone's volunteering with us all day, uh, they could buy themselves a meal deal from Tesco or something like that. Um, and it shouldn't be a cost to them because they're giving their services for free. That's just, it's not free, though, that's it's just the basic principle of volunteering, is it shouldn't cost the volunteer. Um, but Graham, it's not free. If they're, if they're charging the council, irrespective, you know, because you could then open that up to coffee and all the rest of it, couldn't you, you know? I mean, I've never been to a situation where I've volunteered and um, expected to claim expenses, you know? Volunteering is exactly that, it's volunteering, and so if, they can't, if they're not prepared to do it for free, it doesn't count as a volunteer, in my view. Thank you, Terry. Uh, Mike would like to say a point here, he's got his hand up. Yeah, Michael, and yeah. we'll speak to you in a minute, um, Andy, I think. Just, just one thing, one of the um, authorities I used to serve on work on, on the question of fuel expenses and what have you, said they wouldn't pay it unless you went outside the district area. So on the basis that if you're working in the volunteering in your immediate vicinity, it's part of the general good. Yeah, I'll come, I'll come to it now. Ed, what would you like to say, Ed? Oh, thank you. Uh, thanks for making the points, everyone else. That's very good. Uh, I'd like to refer you to 8.1, um, where it says, engaged in any work on our behalf. I think we should insert a word there that says plan. It's not that someone goes off and thinks, oh, I'll do this kind of volunteering, and then you end up with, well, that wasn't what we intended. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. And maybe agreed with the council or something like that as well. And uh, secondly, and agreed with the council. Yeah. Right, so uh, point point one to put in whilst they are on premises or engaged. I don't what, was, that at all, but... what was sorry? What was the wording? 
authorised work. Any authorised work on our yeah. part. Any yeah. authorised and, and, and the next question would be then, who's going to authorise it? Right. Yeah. Well, it's still this at this moment time. You can just run up a bill for nothing. Yeah, Next exactly. is, um, uh, Brian has got his hand up. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's a good, quite a good idea. The policy. Um, I, I must admit, um, we have got quite a lot of volunteers over at Charon Hayes, um, which actually do litter picking. Um, but what we've done is we've provided them with. Um, basically, we provide them with gloves, um, which they should use, and we also provide them with um, litter picker sticks, um, which they give back at the end of the uh, term. We've, in fact, got copious amounts of gloves, considering what was happening. Uh, we, we provide them with bags and some instructions on how to use the bags, because the thing is, when you actually take the stuff to the dump, um, it's got to be separated into the different bits. So you have one volunteer collecting tin cans for, for instance, and somebody may be collecting things which have just got to be disposed of uh, in the disposal thing where it's just, you know, just gone. It's not actually um, re re renewable or whatever. Um, but you also have the situation where um, we felt there that people needed to, when, when they're actually litter picking, quite often they'll go into the road or a gutter or something to pick something up. And so we want to make sure they're visible um, so we provide yellow jackets so that they're safe. And I think in reality, this draft volunteers policy needs to be re-looked at by our safety person, um, you know, in, in the council, um, because we, we, need, we need to get this right. Uh, if the good of policy has got to be done, but even if you've got volunteers, you need to have some kind of uh, control there, otherwise you could actually have quite a lot of liability. It's all the same, you're insured, uh, but the reality is, I'm a little bit concerned that nothing in there whatsoever is there for the safety of the people volunteering. Well said. Uh, we just move on because this is, um, we've got Ben here who wants to say something. I'll come back to you in a minute, Ed. I, just say, I agree with what they're saying, but I think it's kind of the definition of like what's, what, who, what is reasonable and who defines the reasonable out of pocket expense. Exactly. Um, because as much as I can appreciate we could be talking about somebody going by themselves a sandwich, etc. That becomes catering, we don't have a catering budget, and I think we should plan for those things. We don't need an out of pocket out of pocket percent volunteer policy percent like that. Um, but I just kind of want a bit more understanding of who defines reasonable, and I'm assuming town clerk, deputy town clerk, define what's reasonable and then something we pay. Um, but the general principle of some kind of out-of-pocket expense for somebody who's genuinely trying to help us and help the community with their free time, I think is perfectly acceptable. Government departments have volunteering policies where they allow civil servants to take um, paid and unpaid leave as, um, as uh, volunteers in their communities. So I don't think it's anything out of the ordinary. Um, I just think it needs a bit more um, structure around this uh, policy. Yeah. Um, Roger, would like to say something? Yeah, um, on expenses again, it says uh, the volunteer should uh, seek permission from the town clerk, the deputy town clerk, or the youth development and participation worker. What about the finance manager who has to pay for it all? What about the councillor? What about the finance manager? Surely you get approval from the finance manager to spend money on uh, expenses. Right. Yeah. 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 Any of this, and to be quite frank, I think at this moment in time we all shelve this. Yeah, I agree. Because otherwise, we could spend a whole meeting talking about this. There's nothing that's come up at this moment in time I can see that we need volunteers for, unless somebody else can come up with a valid reason why we want a volunteer. I mean, we are all volunteers as councillors. We don't get paid, and we put in hours and hours and hours. We don't get a free meal down at Tesco. Um, sorry, Andy would like to say something. 
Yeah, several times a year when we do actually involve quite a lot of volunteers, i.e. the festival and the fireworks. So we have quite a significant amount of volunteers. But generally you find that uh, most people do have a policy for expenses, but it's incredibly rare that people do actually claim anything back. Yeah, I think so too. There should never be a need really, should there? But I, I do think, Tony, I just think we should move to take this offline and, and review it in some other appropriate way rather than continue talking about it today because I think we might be in danger of swallowing up the whole meeting. I, 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 can I make so, a suggestion that maybe we invite the Volunteer Centre to comment on the policy? Quite a good idea, actually, yeah. I think it is once the councillors have agreed what they think it should say. The, the answer to that is no. <laughs> yeah, I think we should make it our own minds up, not somebody else. Um, Can I just say the way, the way that it works in Southcostershire is basically that um, Southcostershire uh, are actually contacted. They're quite happy to provide volunteers with all the kit themselves, not a problem. Um, and even sometimes we'll provide a skip, um, which they'll take, or just collect the bags. Uh, themselves. So, but I think the reality is, if you're going to title this Bradley Stoke Town Council, you know you're you're actually starting to have major problems with insurance and everything else. Because the volunteers, the real volunteers, will go out and do it. Yes, they'll be supplied by good equipment. But the reality of the matter is, we get a bit of guidance, but it's then nothing to do with us. You know, if you want to volunteer in the area, do stuff. Otherwise, you can have a major raft of problems with insurance and all sorts of things. I think, yeah, I think we do that. Sorry, Sharon. Brian, um, we've done several litter picks here where we've had ivies, we've had the gloves, we've had the litter pickers, and we had sacks, and we've had the local authority to take it away. So we've done that quite a few times here locally, so we, we know the score, and nobody got paid. Um, and also, yeah. we're, just, we're just kind of sort of agreed that we're going to take this offline now. Um, yeah, 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 I think that's. Right. I think we'll take that as a proposal for you, Terry. Yeah. That we'll take this off and then review it in maybe six months. Yeah. Um, if you, if would you like to propose that, Terry? Yes, I would. Yeah. Would you want me to, uh, for us to look into it and come back in March? I think the proposal was we shelved this for six months. I'm not. I'm not mad about the time. I don't. I don't mind whatever anybody suggests a different time, but. I just think, speaking about it, we're not getting anywhere with it tonight. Um, I just think it's not really perfect. Volunteering is volunteering, and we don't get paid. That's the whole point of what people put their hands up to volunteer for the community. That's what well, we do. The worry, Chairman, is that if someone goes volunteering, falls down a rabbit hole and breaks a leg, will, will the council be responsible? We're still talking about it. We're still. We've just agreed that we're going to take it offline, and we're still talking about it. So, quite right. Let's shelve it. Shelve the project. Okay, we'll move on. Okay. So we don't need a proposal. So we don't need a We need to decide what I think. We need to decide what the proposed. So, take offline and review again in. No, we don't review it. We don't redo it. We don't redo it. Well, but that's not my proposal, though, Tony. I, I, I just, I think because of the strength of feeling, I think it might be the right thing to do to have a review, even if it gets shelved totally. I don't know what other people think, but, you know, or, or but... I'm happy. I don't want to shelve it altogether. We don't know what a proposal is yet. No, so, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, my proposal wasn't to take it offline and shelve it. My proposal was to take it offline and consider another way of reviewing it so that we could all agree what's the best way of taking it forward. I think the suggestion which was made to go to the volunteer uh, lady uh, and ask her opinion on it and what we should be doing is by far the best one, to be quite frank with you, and just shelve it completely until you get an answer back and then possibly um, add leisure like youth communities have a look at it. Um, I think that's your, that's your best bet on this one, because otherwise you're going to have a nightmare situation. Let's, uh, let, let's knock this one on. That. Yeah, go on, last one then for Keith. case. Sure. Uh, we're, in, we're in danger of carrying on discussing it. I think, as Terry said, 
you sh we should perhaps redo it, and I would support that. I would also support that we do, like Brian has said, go to the volunteer uh, unit who are more geared up for taking on volunteers. Let's be honest, volunteers, they don't come forward dragging their feet and kicking their heels. They're offering their time. Now, if they do that and they're prepared to give up their time for free and they don't want to even have a tea break or a lunch break or anything like that out of it, you know, we have to abide by health and safety. We would have to have some form of protection for insurance, which, you know, we'd have to check with our council insurance if they're engaging in anything that we're asking them to do. Um, but I think really, you know, let's take some overall guidance from the volunteering unit because they deal with this every day of the week in all sorts of volunteering aspects. So let's just review it, look at it in six months' time if you like. But, you know, in the meantime, perhaps Sharon can do some work behind the scenes and get some feedback, or you, Graham, somebody, uh, and just, you know, present something in the future with, you know, guidelines. Yeah, we can we can do that. Fine, that's... We move on now. <laughs> yeah, that, is that your proposal then, Keith? Yeah. Okay. Terry yeah. Abstentions. There's one from from Cab. Was abstained. Was abstained. Um, Ed seems to have disappeared. <laughs> okay, right. Let's move on. Thank goodness. Um. So the update on the Bradley Stoke Scarecrow Trail. Bell. First of all, I'd like to thank Del for all the hard work in this particular one. Yeah. It was yeah. predominantly yeah. Amazing, amazing job. Predominantly done all on our tractors. Yeah. Predominantly. Yeah. So, um, would you like to say something, Del? Yeah, yeah unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. Fun to do it. It'd be nice to do it again next year, but maybe when it's not so wet. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, I have got the certificate for the spectators, um, so that we can give that out. And the I, I don't know if we've had any funds in from Andy Ward. Not Andy Ward. Um, uh, Andy Wynn. So um if we can perhaps just flog him an email, just say any chance of use a bank details or something. I I think Rachel have um the Willowbrook Centre page now, I think tell you. Right, well, you can chase that one up with the... Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry, did you say you had a certificate? Yeah, I'm sad I've put it to one side and I've got to bring it. I've got it at home in an envelope, a certificate for um, £100 worth of... Oh, the, the price. Ah, oh, right, the yeah. The price, yeah, for right. respect service. And did, um, did the, um, uh, the pub pay? Yes, okay, we've got a nod from... Uh, Okay, lovely. Let's, let's move on. Um, to receive the minutes of the financial meeting on the 16th of December and to deal with any matters referred to the council not covered elsewhere on the agenda. First one is to deal with the financial regulations with wordings amended to the financial regulation 11.3 and additional point 11.10. I, put, I said I put 11.10, but apologies, it should be 11.6. Uh, 
The other thing which we are aware of, which will need to be addressed, is the um, reference to the EU procurement. Hello. You've gone again, Sharon. Yeah. Uh, um. Derek, we can't hear you. Yes, he's not speaking, that's why. Right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we are just wait we are seeking guidance of the wording relating to the European procurement directive um, from Alpha and now. Um, we know that there's a find the tender website which we also will need to use to utilise high value uh, um, high value tenders. So we will we are aware of that, but there will be a further change to financial regulations in due course. Yeah. My only um, point on these changes is item E, where it says if less than three quotes are received for contracts above 10,000, or if all tenders are identical, the council may make arrangements as it feels fit to procure the goods. Now, uh, that just goes away from having three quotes. We don't have three quotes, and we don't have three quotes. I personally feel we should have three quotes. And if you haven't got, you've only got two, you need to go and get another one. Because the, that just opens the floodgates. Mm. Yeah. I, I agree with you, Tony, because there's no, there's no driver then to get three quotes, is there? No, but we just get two for everything, which is over 10,000, which is not a small amount. But that would be a breach of policy anyway, because that's a catch clause if you've not, if you've not, if you've not if you don't. can't get the three quotes. Yeah, but you, you, they should, that shouldn't be in there then at all. You should get three quotes, period. But if they've, if they've gone, the, so what happens if they end up with a situation where no one's, where no one, where people refuse to quote? Uh, you've got to go find another company to quote. There's thousands of companies out there that will, are dying to, to use. Uh, uh, facilities. But we have had specialist companies in the past where it's a very small niche market where we've not been able to get three quotes in. I guarantee you there's more than three companies anywhere on any particular thing throughout this country that you can get a quote from. One, one issue I had when I first came as a councillor is that for example, and I'll give you the example, is the festival organiser. And I said, you keep using the same people year in, year out, which is like giving them an open checkbook. And I said, you really have to go out to tender because by doing that, you, the guy may be the best group for a slice bread, but you don't know whether or not his figures are competitive to somebody else. So what happened? They went out to three quotes. One of the quotes was from a, a guy in City Road, a flat in City Road. I'm sorry, that's just not good enough. So why I am so particular about we should go out and get three quotes, we should get three proper quotes, and there's not a specialist company in this country that there's only two contractors that will quote. I'm sorry, we, we, we have to do due, due diligence for the money that we are spending for our constituents. Yeah. And that's my, uh, that's my point. Um, anybody would like to comment? Any of our close comment? Your hand up, Chair. Rachel. Yeah, Rachel, what would you like to say? Um, this is um, just standard wording, and it doesn't really take away uh, the need for three quotes or tenders. That is in the earlier stages. If it got to the stage that someone didn't quote for whatever reason, then it would go back to council, and council would merely say, right, we need more quotes then, and it, it would just stop it. Um, or they can make the decision the other way. It would be completely in council's power to insist on another quote. And in most instances, you know, sort of it, we do try to, to get three very, very good quotes each time. 
further, you know, sometimes things do happen where um, a, a supplier might, you know, something happens and at the last minute he can't um, offer that boat. So we then haven't got time to uh, the work that's needed to go and get an alternative boat. So it makes more sense for it to come back to council and for council to look at it and make a decision which might very well be, no, we want more boats. Um, I, I'm sorry, I personally feel we need three quotes period. But anyway, that's my personal feelings, Rachel. Anyway, I'll come back to you in a second, Brian. Uh, ben had his hand up in there first. The point I had about E is I do not, I do not disagree with you at all, Tony, yeah. on the idea to go and get three quotes. And I, I stand by that very strongly, that we should be going to get quotes down. The only thing I'd say is in terms of like how this regulation is worded in standing orders, that E statement is giving you the possibility that council could choose to authorise something it wanted to. If we remove that E statement out, we don't get as an opportunity as a council to then go and authorise something because we're then act acting outside of our financial regulations. If, if camp officers went away and didn't quote the three quotes, they're breaking the regulation, if we got less than two quotes and didn't come back to us, as that says, it's the council to make the decision about the arrangements it wishes to take. If they didn't do any of that, our officers would be acting in breach of our regulation. So that gives us, that gives, a, that gives council, full council, the ability to look at the situation on merits at the time and then make the decision. It doesn't allow us to say we're not going to get three quotes or less than three quotes for whatever reason without course, we do course first. The, 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 the problem is, I accept what you say, Ben, but the problem is, it opens it up to, we only get two quotes. No, it doesn't. No, it, 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 it does. It does. It, uh, Brian, yes, it does. If it says here, you cannot get three quotes, then we're going to have two quotes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's not good enough. You just have to do your due diligence and go and get another quote. Tony, it doesn't say that. It says that we council has to make such arrangements it thinks are fit for procuring the goods or materials. Yeah, but and, you will, and you will then, if you've only got two quotes, accept one of those two quotes. No, no, we don't have to, because no, we can insist to, uh, we can go for a third quote. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no way to have that in there at all. Yeah. But if, if, so if we're in that situation, we'd then be in a situation where we're continually trying to get quotes. If you have an issue, if there was a fundamental issue, we don't have the standing order, we don't have the financial regulation to accommodate the issue. That's giving us the power as a council to make a decision. It, to have two quotes. If, so if, it, it, I think My point is, we shouldn't be in that position. We should always go out and get two I, quotes, I, regardless. I fully agree with you, but we need, we, need to have a, we need to have a very broad policy to deal with as many potential case problems, or issues, case, cases that come through it. We but shouldn't be put in this position that we have to make a decision on two points. That's a full back position. But that's yeah. it. Can I come in here, please? Full back yes, position. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, let's have another opinion. One of all, Michael. Franklin, and yeah. sorry, after you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. No, I think it depends on the policy that we have set in place in terms of procure, uh, our procurement strategy and the amount of money that, the, the budget that we have. If it's less than a specific, a specific amount, we can decide to go for just one. However, if we, we, we move beyond that threshold, then we can consider the three code for us to pick one. So it's up to us to agree on if we are going to pay the 10K, we can decide to go for one code. If it's more than that, then we can stick to three codes for us to uh, decide which one to go for. Which is, you have got that, it does say the clerk shall invite quote from at least three yeah. firms, at yeah. least. That's what that amended regulation allows you to do, but if you amend E, it just, it doesn't do anything other than... Uh, I think we should point out that, uh, well, three is obviously the desire in every case. When it came to the delivery of the annual report last year, we ended up with one company only. Mm -hmm. Well, in that case, the council can make the decision then, can't they? So if... If it was changed to um, say that it, we, we, it, we must get three quotes, if when you actually come down to it, you only get to, you, you only physically can get two. If that does happen, that would then have to go to council and say, even though we have to get three, we have only been able to get two. So what do the council want to do? So it's like a 
That's like a cat straw then. But that's what it that's what it means. Yeah, that's what he's for. That's what he's for. No, 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 yes. no. Yeah. 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 But the thing is that he wants their fact, but we the should be three quotes. But what he's if I understand what Tony's saying, he's saying that there's a this is built into this is a danger that the, the council or the um, person who's collecting the quotes will just look for two quotes rather than the three, which is the best, you know, better value for money for the constituents. To me, Terry, the way you just explained that situation there and how that decision is made by council, clause E is what gives council the ability to make that decision because it says if less than three quotes are received, it's not going to say you cannot get less than three quotes, it, you have to go through that process of getting quotes. If we don't have quotes and the process hasn't been followed, then the financial regulation has not been followed. But so, so, so the, the, what my view is that the beginning sentence of that should say three quotes are obligatory. However, if circumstances say or you know if circumstances or that two are available for whatever reason, then the rest of it all you know all that rest of the sentence. Stand. But I don't think, as it reads there, I agree with what it's saying. It just, the whoever's getting the quote could just get two quotes and then come to the council and say, oh, I've only got two quotes. You know, so I think it is, I, I, I think it's the normal process of financial management that you get three quotes. So I don't see what the difficulty of putting that into that sentence is. And then if three quote if, if three quotes are not available for whatever reason, which will come out in the discussion of the council, then they can decide whether to go ahead with one of the other two quotes. Thank you, Terry. Uh, Michael, you wanted to say something? No, I've made my Okay, point. Tom, you wanted to say something? Tom? Mm -hmm. Because shut your yeah, chair, you're right, okay. One of the things which I would like to read out is eleven point three itself. The in this 11.1, the clerk shall invite quotes from at least three firms to be taken from the appropriate list. So in that way, I think E, as it stands right now, I agree with the Ben, that if less than three quotes are received for contracts, um, I think that will do. I think um, uh, I think there is a provision already in the, in the regulation that we should look for Which at, least, at least three firms. Is that, am, I wrong? am I clear? Am I clear? Yeah. To me, Tom, yes, thank you. Uh, Brian, you wanted to say something? Uh, yeah, I, I, I do. Um, but I also uh, would prefer Rachel, who's one of our officers, who understands it more than anybody, um, to be able to speak. As she said around it for ages, so Rachel would speak before I will, and then I would like to come in afterwards. Uh, thank you, Tony. All right. Rachel, what would you like to say? Um, I, I was about to say what Tom just said, so thank you, because the way these regulations actually work, 11.3, the very first paragraph where it does say the clerk should invite quotes from at least three terms to be taken from the appropriate list, that has to happen. All the, um, the other items coming in and underneath between A and F are after that initial instruction or um, uh, directive has been applied, these then follow. So no matter what, at least, it, so it's not three, it's at least three have to be, um, um, ha have to be, um, or we have to try and obtain them. Then item E is if out of those three or more quotes, that people have applied for, if less than um, three do come in, or if a couple of them match, then council have got a decision to either choose one of them or to go for more quotes. So this is all related to the initial paragraph of the 11.3, and that's the way re uh, financial regulations work, exactly how, how Tom, um, what Tom was explaining as well. But three does not say what you've just said? 11.3 does E doesn't say what you've just said. You've got to read the top paragraph. No, you have to, 11.3 is... Uh, I've got 11.3 that you need three quotes from a list. 
well, what's this list? Where is it? Well, I mean, it, it's, um, it would be from local providers or, I mean, it's going to have to be someone, you know, that has got a good credit rating. So it, it's not just generally, um, you know, sort of... Um, so quoting from somebody who lives in a flat in St Paul's um, was somebody who's got possibly a good credit rating, which is what has happened in the past. I can comment. Fine. Okay. Uh, I, all I'm just trying to, all I'm just trying to put across is that by putting in E, it leaves the option for the officers to only go out and get two quotes. No, no. It does. No, the, the first paragraph. But it says if less than three quotes are received. But you've got to read E as a tail on from the main paragraph of top six nine. Uh, and that yes, right eleven eleven point three. I have applied and, and E then gives you the option that you only need to have two quotes. No, no because, because as officers we have to get at least three quotes. It doesn't, not that, it doesn't say that, though. But in 11.3, it's not right. It's a, if you take an example, a live example... If yeah, you know, I was to speak right. next after, Rachel, I had a bit of people are putting in, and you've actually come back as well afterwards and had a great discussion. Uh, Brian, what would you like to say? I would like to say we would accept Ben's proposal because it makes common sense, and it disappear uh, that the chair is actually... Um, really sort of not understanding what he is as far as I'm concerned because he actually gives the council the right to actually determine that. So it's not a problem and the reality is sometimes things are time sensitive and that could be a problem. There's also a problem, which I'm not sure this actually uh, been stated before, but I'm very unhappy when somebody comes in and they haven't been to meetings and we get two quotes and the council's going to decide on it in this particular manner. And they say, oh no, I don't know somebody who's got that. They could do that. <clears throat> they then got information on what the quotes were. So they could feed that back, which I'm not very happy about as well. So there's lots and lots of things which could be done. But I think this one is not a problem. And you need to read that, Tony. And we've got a proposal on the table from Ben. I'm second it. And I think it should be held now. That's it. Well, yeah, Brian, but people who haven't had a chance to have a say, you have. Thank you very much. Um, you a proposal? Yeah, yeah, okay. And we're not ready to take well, the proposal. Please don't keep um, interrupting everybody when they say things. Brian, I mean, back. Brian, I'm insisting Brian, still right. Yeah. Well, the Brian, Brian um, I think that's a little bit uncalled for. However, Chairs um, don't do that. They're supposed, to, we, they're supposed to run a meeting that everybody yeah, understands. Brian, you've got a good say, Brian. Yeah. Th thank you, Brian. Um, we, we'd like other people to have their viewpoint before we make a proposal. And I don't think everyone's had their view. Um, you, you were saying something, Terry, before you got into yeah, I, was, I was just going to say that... Um, it's very clear in, in 11.3 that the clerk will invite three quotes, but um, it then says in E that that could then result in two quotes, and it doesn't. There's nothing in E that directs um, the the alignment with that statement in 11.3. So I think we could just add in there. Um, as it, you know, the council may make such arrangements as it thinks fit for procuring the goods or materials or, accept, or executing the works, which could could include additional quotes. That covers it then. Sorry, we've actually got elsewhere, Chairman, in there that uh, all quotes will be received and opened in the presence of a councillor, and I think the, the town clerk. Now, what you're saying goes totally against that, because you're proposing that subsequent bids will be accepted. No, I'm just saying that if only two quotes are received, then the council could make arrangements, whatever those arrangements might be, which could include asking for, few, for further quotes, which could, would also then be opened 
in view in full um, you know view of all councils councillors. Well, no, because but, but, but there's no, so the way I've read this, there is no need for a man that because the situation Terry's explaining is what council would do, that would make a decision based on that, based on that scenario, or yeah. any scenario for that matter, because that's what he allows you to do. He and is no, there's, no, there's, no, there's no issue with putting those words in there then, because it just no, makes it, that's clarifying it, it, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. But, but it's supposed to be a clause to say that council receives a situation from its officers and they're presented with the situation and then you make a decision. So the council may make such arrangements as it thinks fit for procuring goods and materials. You could decide you don't want to execute that and you don't think the process has been fit, therefore you want to go back and get more quotes. And yeah, you like might should say you can be able to so clarifying that in E is, is, is I think, going to sort the debate we're having here. <coughs> it just seems to be a resistance to actually making that sentence more clear. I think that extra bit in would just clarify it and doesn't change yeah. the, the, the actual, it's the council that ultimately makes the decision. And if you put that, which well, could include seeking further quotes, and or following the new process. Or rerunning the process from the beginning because you've then got a situation like Michael just said. Yeah, so all rerunning yeah, the process. Yeah. So yeah. that would yeah. rerun the process. Yeah. yeah. That would work as well. Would you be happy with that, Tony? Yeah, that's right. I'll go along with that. Can we have a proposal then? Oh, my God. Oh, sorry, Tom. Yeah, Ben actually proposed I really to be our second of it, to be honest. That's how. Well, no, I think Ben was proposing a different thing. But if Ben, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to propose what I've just suggested, then I'm happy with that. So what are we going to say? So, so it say... literally will say on the end of it, just adding, which could include seeking further quotes or rerunning the entire process again. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. Ben's proposed that. Yes. Oh, sorry, Bob. Not me. Well, I'm second it. I'll second it then. Are you seconded it, Brian? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Good. Okay, so those in favour? Unanimous, I think. Yeah. Can I just... Um, sorry, Ed, did you... Were you presenting, please? Hang on, sorry. What's Rachel saying? Is that going to be... No, I'm going to say that this paragraph applies in other sections as well, so it would mean we amend all of the paragraphs what, um, that, have the, that have the same wording. So, my 11.2b does mention it's less than three tenders in a seat. So, this proposal would have to include all of these paragraphs. The thing to be asked to propose an amend today was what was discussed at a previous meeting, which yeah. is the stuff in red. If you've then got an issue with item B, e, which is then a further proposal to amend uh, uh, the E, that's fine, you can just that. Surely that should be Rachel going back, looking at all the other stuff, and then, it's when, they, it's when. And then making that decision. Well, we will need to, we need to come back anyway with financial rates when we get the European procurement bit. My, I would suggest that we then amend the other bit when we, when we come back, which will be March for okay. Council, hopefully, for the other one. Yeah? Yeah, that's good idea. Okay. So, right. sorry, Ed, were you, did you abstain or were you against or were you in favour? Ed? You're on mute. Uh, I was saying, and I want to add a suggestion, really, that where people see um, issues in a piece of work, we're losing so much time on going round what a contract writer should do. So if someone sees something, we we'll say, OK, let's review it and come back to it. I've sat here and watched that clock go around for nearly 30 minutes. We're talking about a, a, 
a, a piece that, that, that could be done in five if someone sat down and said, let me rewrite it to make the point. Uh, you know, we've had everybody making comments about everyone else. I think it's a wrong way to run. I just want to make sure next time people read the documentation you're giving in your pack. If you've got an issue, then have it marked clearly and make the point. I, I just find we're wasting time and it's irritating. My right. comment. Thank you, Ed. Sorry, Jay. I, I actually asked Ed, were you, were you in favour? Did you vote in favour or against sort of staying? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Right. Um, so we're on to 8.2. Yeah, 8.2. Amend the standing orders to the word in amendment is the additional point. So obviously we have standing orders, the financial matters bit of standing orders needs to match with the financial regulations. So um, it's adding in the bit that was agreed um, that um, contracts over £10,000 shall be opened by the clerk and at least one member of the council and then adding in the bottom one about um, awarded contracts not being paid up. Uh, being right. paid up on annually, which is what is in, in financial regs. So obviously for a standing order, um, you have to just propose and second it now, and then it, it, nothing actually happens on that until the next full council meeting, and hopefully by then we will have received the, um, the European... Yes, so we'll have a proposal and a second for that one. I second it. Thank you, Okay. Those in favour? No, no, I don't need to vote on that. Okay. Right, so that's moving on then to eight point three. Um, the all sites gas and electricity review. And I think there's a, a piece to say that um, because of lockdown we're not reviewing it. That's right, isn't it, Rachel? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I've just lost my, I've just literally lost my agenda on my table. <laughs> uh, um, is it yeah, all sites gas and electric review? Yeah, at 8.3, um, yeah, the, so one of the brokers um, um, that had, had provided some really good space um, for November and December meeting was unexpectedly furloughed in early January. Um, so I did the service to Tony and Ben um, um, that uh, we were due to invite uh, another supplier, a uh, region to purchase them, and to have a look at some two traits um, at this meeting. But obviously, uh, whether this uh, broker has been there, he was able to provide So we brought it back to um, to serve it until later on so that uh, we would have competitive um, and comparative quotes to make an informed decision. Since then, I spoke to the broker today, this is a further update. Um, he is actually an, in an independent broker that works under the umbrella of other um, utility uh, broking companies and he's actually moved to Consultant Utilities Limited and he's expecting to be up and running at the beginning of February because he wasn't happy about the situation um, with the previous company. So um, he said he's more than willing to um, buy another spray. It will be exactly the same service uh, or, or a level of service. It will just be with Consultant Utilities instead of Utility Alliance. But it will be the same growth Thank you, Rachel. So we're deferring this moment in time. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, moving on to number nine, to receive the minutes for the Planning and Environmental Committee of on the 25th. Just to receive them. Yeah. So we've received the minutes. And to receive the minutes from the Leisure Youth and Amenities Committee, 14th of December. Okay, we've received those. And uh, right, the next one is the updates from South Gloucestershire Council Board members. Um, we'll, we'll 
go through the bottom of the Zoom panel then. So, Franklin, do you have anything? Yes, please. There's a quick one for me. I think, uh, as you're all aware, Prime Minister became a uh, epicenter for COVID. Um, and then I think as a council, we have come up with this mass community testing. And Monday was the first day that we started in Bradley So I would urge everyone, if you haven't gone there to have any tests, you, have, you can go there and you can also communicate it to your individual world uh, resident to participate in this uh, mass testing. Thank you. Is that at the sports centre? Yes, okay. Leisure centre. Yeah. And what's the times for that? From 9, 9 to uh, 5 p.m. 9 to 5, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, right, so we've got then next is um, John. Do you have anything reference South Gloucestershire? No. Uh, Keith? Keith Panny? Do you have anything? In reference to... Can you hear me? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, only one. Uh, the uh, Concord Medical Centre Vaccination Centre is now up and running. Uh, it is being used by all the medical practices within our whole area. That's Bradley Stoke, Little Stoke, Stoke Giffords, Patchway, all of them. And no. they're doing it by an arrangement with the practice here at Concord where it may be Bradley Stoke are using it Friday morning, say, uh, Patchway are using it on Thursday, it's so on and so forth like that. Also, Dr. Bradley and his wife, Dominique, are out doing a, um, a flying squad, if you like, going out doing all the elderly people in their doors, on their doors. Uh, they were shown on the HTV uh, news the other evening. Uh, giving a vaccination to a 94-year-old lady uh, within her porch. So, you know, I mean, they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart, really. I mean, obviously these people could be being uh, asked to go along to those uh, vaccination centres to have it done, but they are providing that sort of um, vaccination squad, if you like, where they go out and do it in the hope. So, all the positive stuff. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, uh, Keith. Brian, have you got anything from South Coastership? No, I'm going to say that, uh, <coughs> that South Coast is still working and uh, <coughs> the offices are quite busy. Um, we're looking at the budgets at the moment, <coughs> which are going to be quite difficult to impose loads of tax on you. Um, but that's about it. Loads <laughs> of tax on me? <laughs> yeah, on <Yeah>. you. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Um, Roger, do you have anything? Um, um, I've been involved in a few planning committees which have been intense and fraught. based in Yates, as Brian will know, because he was on the other ones. Oh, yeah, he's um, on his own. I read some of that. Yeah. Um, I think you've given those pounds of my map to the scopes. We should be uh, you know, swimming in it by now, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. Okay, I thought. Right, we move on to number 12, financial matters, 2021-22. Uh, and forward plan. Did you want to say anything, Rachel? Well, you've got your report, um, my reporting plan with you. So, uh, at the last meeting, um, it was proposed that we uh, be looked at between zero and two percent um, at LIPS. Um, so, linked to that, um, I just updated the, um, the second budget draft that was looked at uh, by the Centre of Finance. Um, so the previous year budget uh, have been highlighted in blue on the uh, budget draft breakdown if you wanted to go through that. Sorry. 
but I have highlighted um, for an MO, bank investment in turn, um, it's minimal changes, uh, it's just increasing the budget to 5,300 based upon recent reinvestments and updated estimates from um, some of the uh, bank accounts. Uh, new letter publishing, slightly reduced down to 3,000 following the, the uh, contracts that were approved at the under finance. And um, South Lost have come in, uh, they actually the dog bin, uh, and they've come in with their latest uh, price, so it's just slight, very slightly reducing that budget. I mean, it, it's peanuts, but it, it's better to be accurate, sort of moving forward. Um, so, Council would need to approve those if they're happy with it. It's just reducing the budget from those budgets from 10 own, Seven six to nine thousand seven hundred. Do you want to make a decision on that at the end, or do it now? I think it makes sense to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ben would like to say something. He's got his hand up there. Yeah. 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 Yeah
um, it, it, it's shown there because originally this um, would have come out of the normal grant funding years ago, but when uh, the youth provision was set up to sort of maintain sort of, uh, the amount of funding, we separated it off and put it within the youth provision, where, whereas really it, it was with uh, grant aid. The next part, which is I know is the one that um, is interesting people the most, is the core youth funding. So um, it's broken down into, um, we try to break it down into sort of separate areas. Uh, the overall amount of core funding is 41,200. So that includes, um, in the first block, 13,500 for the youth minibus and associated costs. Um, the youth um, activities at the community festival, um, project work events that, um, and residentials, um, sessional resources, equipment and supplies. So that's all broken down. Now, we call it the core budget because um, we try or grown sort of, uh, tries to get additional funding on top. But this core funding is used as the platform to then try and get more external funding. So these are the maximum amounts that can be spent at any time uh, without external grant funding. Um, the skate park, um, I've shown that in yellow, that's this year it was uh, re-estimated because that's all developing with um, you know day-to-day -day running and sort of contract costs. Uh, 7,520, and I know this came up last time, um, Tony, so I've tried to sort of highlight it. Where we're separating it off, for next year, that is going to move down to the bottom and have its own separate code, so that we're separating it off um, and we can actually show sort of all the contracts as they come through and itemise expenditures, so there's a lot more detail. Uh, the next item is showing um, round about 20,000, uh, 20,070 uh, for next year. So um, November Council originally approved the recruitment, uh, recruitment of additional um, youth um, workers. Uh, I know that's coming up later on. Um, so based on this, um, and after the questions that were asked last time, and in addition to the breakdown that has been provided, um, we try to um, explain how it works. So, um, in the current year, had things been open and had youth workers been recruited, um, the core budget would have been 20, just over 20,000. The aim uh, the funding uh, would be to increase that to £37,955 to get external uh, youth workers in. Um, so at the moment, we have got additional unspent grant aid um, that uh, we will be able to carry forward to next year. So, the more interesting one is, um, 2122, the budget um, within the fourth um, four year budget would be £20,070. Um, that would be the maximum that could be spent on these workers without external grant funding at this stage. Now, grant, external grant funding and previously um, underspent grant funding is available. So um, the target amount uh, would be £38,904.40, which um, again I'll come back to this sheet because that itemises the number of hours that we put um, in the cover and the sessions that we cover. So based on this, uh, we 10,000 external funding has already been agreed. Uh, we're predicting an end of spend on um, the, the grant funding from this year to carry forward, which would be 8,835. And then the remaining uh, uh, be from 11,230 carried, carried forward 
for a little bit of the current year. So external that, that's, yeah, sorry, external So um we're, we're trying to sort of make it clear because I, I know it's quite complicated. So basically we have a poor budget. That budget cannot be exceeded unless there is external funding to reach the target um, um, level that, that ideally um, can be wanted to cover all the use of it. But if that external funding is not available, that those workers will not be taken on. So they'll be on limited term contracts or zero contract hours. So but if funding drops through the floor and it wasn't available, then we would just have funding within the full budget and we would not be stuck with additional um, hourly work that we couldn't afford because the external funding was dried up. Um, so then the next stage, um, number paid 5,600 for the skate park. That is still a work in progress because uh, we're, we're still developing and um, when the shipping containers are, are um, kitted out properly, um, you know, so we will have additional costs like in, um, um, internet and things like that. So that... And like you said, Rach, that is just moving it down from above, isn't it? That's the yeah. same 7,500. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's not adding. So all that box, that 41,200, that is literally the core youth funding. And that is used as the basis to then get external funding for, for sort of various other activities. On the next page, um, we've got the external uh, grant funding that has already been agreed. And we these ones, um, it's specifically allocated for youth activities and quite specific youth activities. So we've been really, really strict with this because of the way that our budgets work. So um, we, we've got uh, the original amount that um, is, is approved. Whatever balance is left at the end of um, a financial year, that is immediately rolled. It is the only budget that is rolled out of all of our budgets. So that's <laughs> and, and that's because it is specific to youth grant funding. So we either use it for the specific activity for which it was allocated, or we have to give it back. So that's why that one is funded, um, sorry, rolled and kept very um, specific. And the, because we have got um, the understanding from prior years carried forward, that is what at the moment we are uh, planning to use to fund the, um, the target youth work level for next year um, that's going to come up uh, later on. Um, on top of that, obviously within accounts you have to have um, assets and planned projects. Um, that's not an additional budget. Um, if we have um, any um, assets that we purchased, like um, earlier this year, we a computer was purchased uh, linked to you. We deduct that from the core budget and just move it over into planned project. So it's not an additional. Everything relates back to the core budget and then is moved about if, if the expenditure requires that. Then, then finally, on the um, final page, it's the reserves. So we have, at the moment, in the number code 379, we have unallocated these reserves um, that stand at 40,000. Um, within that, at the moment, hovering away in the background, um, 10,000 has been approved um, to fit out the shipping containers. That's pending the seat of uh, quotes. So once those quotes come in, that 10,000 then is no longer an unallocated. It will move into skate park for development reserve. 
a pellet bank and then it will move out and disappear out of the earmark reserve. So I'm, I'm trying to demonstrate that we closely monitor all the money within the youth budget. We're not adding sort of money here, there and everywhere. It's really, really, it's quite strict and it works differently to our other budget because it's reliant um, to a massive degree on on obtaining external grant funding. Um, so then the, the final earmark reserve, that was um, implemented by council. Um, uh, when was that? Um, uh, April 19. And that was because at that time, sort of youth budgets weren't being fully spent because the youth provision hadn't fully developed. So I think it was then, um, back in April 19, suggested that with the skate park being such a huge um, asset, the same as we treat um, our play areas and activity centres, we should have um, a, a replacement and maintenance reserve that is just there for the future for any you know, more expensive repairs that may be needed you know, that, that's due to our intent. It's not just the general expenditure. So um, I'm hoping that that makes it sort of more clear. I don't know if... Greg, do you want to add anything or...? No, I think you've uh, covered it fairly significantly. It's just... Uh, uh, like, like you touched on that, I think it's important to note that um, because the core We've, we've been doing a lot of infrastructure development in terms of the skate park and um, the youth buildings, which you know, the councillors have been around for a while, knew that there was talk of different locations possibly for that. And then due to the success of a very small building at the skate park, we decided to locate it there. Um, but um, so we've used previous, we've either, we've, well, as you know from previous reports, we've, we've got a significant amount of external funding over the last few years, I think over 300,000, 350,000 core and revenue funding, uh, and that is it, in a sense, has safeguarded some of the core BST money, which then you guys agreed to roll over, uh, and we've used that to contribute to some of the infrastructure development, but we're now at the point where we need the revenue funding to employ the people so we can fully work the resources that you've invested in. For example, getting the shipping containers open three times a week as a youth building, uh, as well as doing our detached sessions and work, because it's important to do work across the community. I think that's one of the things that has helped in recent years, um, I'd like to think, made a positive impact on reducing levels of antisocial behaviour, is because we've made to, we've been able to develop positive relationships just, with not just one group of young people, but quite a large age spectrum of different cohorts. Back in 2021, please. Uh, we're, we're on this uh, agenda to say we're going to detail, we're going to have a detailed discussion on the youth budget. Because this comes into the uh, third budget draft, it's part of the third budget draft and the yeah, plan. But, but we have this part of the third budget draft and search for it. I mean, there's like the stacks of it there to discuss if you want to. So why, why are we focusing on youth budget all of a sudden? Because council previously asked for um, uh, and a separate youth annex yeah, well, we do it. to the budget breakdown. So I was just trying to get it into a part format that um, well, is okay. understandable to move forward with for the future. So. Do you want, should we just move on to the preset or do you want to, uh, uh, are there any questions for the sort of budget breakdown or do you want to uh, discuss that all at the end? I was going to ask a question on the 2021 the year end position within the five year forward plan. So the projected position 
is based on the assumption that the total income budget is achieved, mm -hmm. all expenditure budgets are spent. Yeah. And underneath it is currently predicted that expenditure will be below budget, partly due to the impact of COVID. Yeah. Which will then increase the current estimated year end surplus above the projected level. Why do we base the assumption that the, the income budget will be 100% achieved? Um, we never get it. It, it, it's just the way our five-year forward plan works because you, you have to base it on something. Funnily enough, I think we are actually going to achieve it. When, uh, from our uh, recent work that I've been doing that is finished yet, um, uh, we should be uh, reach target. And um, if we don't, bearing in mind that the bulk of the income is preset, it's not going to be up by a great deal and also bearing in mind that um, we did slash the, uh, the income from the activity centres uh, back in June quite quite rightly um, but what's helping us greatly is that we are receiving local restriction grant aid um, so um, we're getting a thousand pounds um, every every couple of weeks for Bailey's Court and Jubilee Centre each and £667 for Brook Way and that's based upon our um, business rate. So we weren't expecting that grant and it's beginning to, to add up quite substantially. So that's helping sort of bridge the gap. So between the two, the grant aid that we've secured and the fact that we slashed our um, um, activity centre income projections, we will reach 100% of income, if not exceed it. Really good. Hey, back here. All right, so um, uh, are we going to propose this is a set that reset? Sorry, final budget last and forward back. Should we just move on to the um do you, do you want to see the precept or do you want to sort of vote on the the vote yeah. now? Yeah. Um, the the precept then. Yeah. Okay. So um so what I've done I I've followed the sort of council's direction. Um but just as another reminder that went to finance, uh, and I put it in again because uh, obviously um, this is a prompter. Um, uh, before making the decision, council have got to consider the uh, the Brookway development decision to really tax 100,000 from the old tax refurbishment budget. Um, we're hoping to change that from uh, additional year end surplus. Uh, if not, we're going to have to go for a public works loan. Um, uh, Bailey's called play area. Um, in an ideal world, we would have heard that, uh, about that uh, sort of grant already from the 50,000 that Dell uh, has been dealing with. Um, and so the panels um, have also uh, been mentioned. So I'm just sort of reminding councillors um, uh, about those items. Um, Ed, um, earlier um, this month, um, quite rightly, asked about uh, surrounding pre um, uh, precepts from uh, surrounding areas. So um, I, I have uh, got hold of the information and, and issued uh, the table that you can see there, which is a, quite a useful guide just to see uh, how our le levels fit with things around us. That is for 2020, 2021 and obviously not for next year, but I think being one of you know sort of the, the uh, sort of larger uh, councils, we're in a good position there. Um, then below that, the next page down. Um, again, I just did um, a summary of the different options, uh, ranging between the 0% preset and a 2% preset increase. Um, highlighting in the fourth column along what the uh, preset level would be 
parameters for band D property. So at the moment it's 116 pounds 94. And obviously that's uh, with a zero preset would remain the same. And then obviously going up in levels is specified within the table. And also itemizing the actual increase to band D property. Um, uh, obviously that will be for um, those above the boundary, it will be slightly more but not a huge amount and again it will be less for those um, between um, band A and C. Uh, total presets, totals that are shown there. The projected position um, at the year end, uh, the end of March 22, uh, again um, that's based on the assumption that all income and expenditure budgets are either achieved or spent during the year. We we are very, very uh, restrictive with our budgets um, and we've always had a surplus uh, to, to date. So that's to take that um, in, in mind. The, uh, the, the, the end column is showing the projected position at the end of the five-year period on the 31st of March 2025. Now that does assume an 0.5% annual increase uh, from uh, 22-23 and annually going through because that was the format that we called plan was set up in. Uh, but I think that shows a really, really strong position and just to let you know, before sort of coming into the meeting, I looked at the uh, December CPI that was issued today, and that's standing at 0.8%. Um, I don't know if that additional information helps. And then finally, again, just highlighting that um, looking at the figures and bearing in mind, uh, you know, the lockdown that we're going through um, and the possibility that it's going to go on longer than first predicted. Um, our expenditures are likely to remain fairly um, flat for, for certain projects. Um, so we will exceed the projections of the uh, £62,703 year on year on surplus that we're expecting. Um, and any additional surplus, I would um, I, I would then direct into the areas as, as I specified in the table. So the, uh, first of all, the development of Brook Clay to um, EE about £100,000 uh, decision um, and restore the all site refurbishment and as much as possible. Um, possibly into the play area if, um, if we don't get the grant that we're hoping for. Uh, although we might not necessarily need that. Um, we also need to um, restore the hard port uh, uh, surface repair because uh, we've just spent that. And then uh, anything left over can go into the future budget funding reserve, which then impacts future presets in a very positive way. So um, at the end of, I know I've put it in the table as well, but at the end of this report, I've also attached uh, the summary um, going through, ranging across the, the various prefect options that you've got available. Yeah. I don't know if there's any other information that you, you want at this stage. Uh, uh, ben wanted to say something on this matter, so Ben? So yeah, um, in regards to precepts, um, obviously in the uh, finance meeting we initially had higher estimates based on thinking about large projects, etc. in the future, and that trying to have that debate, we brought it down to a smaller range, which uh, I think was sensible, um, which is what we did. And then I've kind of think about this myself, but just morally over the last two months when we were, uh, since we had that meeting. And for me, I'm finding, I, I'm trying to gauge the opinion of other councils really, because I'm just finding it a bit difficult thinking about the impacts and potentially what others might be going, uh, you know, having trouble in the community with jobs and what have you at the moment. And considering we're like in quite a good financial state and 
the projected end of year position at the end of the 31st of March 2022 would still have a surplus, even if we didn't do any uplift to our uh, precepts this year. Um, I'm a bit wrestling morally about what the, what, the thing to, what the right decision to do is in my head, because um, I keep thinking that we should probably try and not do anything, not have any increase, because there are going to be members of our community who have been impacted this year in some way, shape or form, even though we are talking about a very small increase per year. And I just think morally, it, I, I'm struggling to agree with um, having nothing. I think that's admirable what you've just said there, Ben. And I know John Ash is in the same sentiments that we shouldn't put anything up. Yeah, I agree with that as well. Um, I think as strong conservatives, we, we have always been conservative in what we do. I would agree with that as well. I think that makes good to say. Yeah. It's, the, it's only the right thing to do, and, and like Ben said, morally... Okay, wait, take a second. We got, we, we, we put your hand up if you want to speak, because it's, it's uh, getting very pity again. So, yeah, Roger was, was yeah, speaking. I was saying originally I thought perhaps 0.5%, because only because Rachel's factored it in on the five-year plan, and uh, probably uh, without having to go through all those... Uh, Problems again it might be easier, but um, I think possibly uh, okay. I'd go along with a zero percent increase. Uh, you know, looking at uh, the hardships endured by many families and uh, uh, etc. So, Terry, I absolutely agree. I think it's the it's the right and proper thing to do. I think we've just got to be we've got to be sort of you know um, supporting the residents in this in this dreadful time. So I think it's the only right and proper thing to do. Hello. John, sorry, John, he's got his hand up. You need to unmute yourself, John. Yeah. So I, I was going to go for 0. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. Sir. Yeah, I was going to go for 0.5 percent, but having heard, having heard what my colleague said, I think a zero percent is correct because we don't know what South Gloss is going to do. We can have a good guess; it's going to be nearly five percent. And then we've got the police and we've got the fire authority on top. And even if we get only 0.5%, which is less than a quid a year, it still shows on the council tax bill the percentage we put it up. Yeah. So yes. um, I'm fully supportive of uh, no rise at all. Yeah. Um, um, we'll go for Andy first at the top. I tend to agree when you consider that our year end situation is actually probably going to be better than what we've got in front of us now. I think it's a no brainer, and I uh, agree with what John's saying. It's been a hard year for everybody, and I think it's, it's supporting the residents. Okay, Ben would like to say something, and then Roger. So I would like to formally propose then that we increase the preset by nothing. Okay. I would second that, um, especially in light of uh, Sir Gloucestershire's 4.99% increase. In the year. <laughs> Yeah, huge. Uh, okay, then, yeah. so we've got a proposal by Ben that we leave it at 0%. We've seconded it by Roger. Um, those in favour? That's unanimous. Yeah, yes. unanimous. Thank you. Right, so we. Can you also repeat the final budget draft and fourth plan? Based on that right. what she wants so to actually approve the, the forward plan based on the north percent which is mm -hmm. the, the, the final draft and forward plan on the north percent yeah. that one on Okay, we've, we've got a proposition here from Ben that we propose the uh, uh, reset. The forward plan as um, based on the zero percent. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. 
Well, two of them are that you have got the two quotes for one leg, one of which was 950 and the other one was 850, and then contractor two did actually put a quote in as well if council wants to go for a leg replacement, which was only £20 more than the contractor so, one. And how much was the render? Uh, the render was 850 plus the 80. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's to, to take the tiles off and make good underneath and, yeah, it's not yeah, Will they be putting a, a lead flashing then on the bottom instead of doing render? The, the quote says, to remove the remains of the existing lead cheap and broken tiles, etc., we cover the cheap with uniflex lead replacement or render. Replacement of broken tiles and flashings, etc., all materials, plant and labour included. I think the um, chairman may know that for £100 saving, the saving may be considerably more had we got to replace the lead again in six months, six time. months, 12 months' time. So I would go for a non lead option. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. Or red lead. Oh, yeah, I mean, we've got to, I think we've got to steer away from the lead because obviously that's what's caused the problem in the first place. Well, you've got your hand up, what you have to say? Yeah, yeah, I, I quite agree we should definitely not go for lead. However, some of the uh, <coughs> proprietary materials which they use, which are not lead, actually look like lead. <laughs> so yeah. we'll, we'll be able to screw it off anyway. I mean, there, there's the other uh, one you can go for, uh, I must admit. It's interesting because we've got two quotes, and uh, you're not interested in that, actually, we're not that much. But yeah. in reality, you could also go for fiberglass, because uh, a lot of the uh, people now are putting fiberglass in, uh, which seems to work quite well. Um, and of course, you have got to do rendering uh, in any event, even with lead. So, you know, I think, you know, the fiberglass might be a different thing, but that may well be a thing. So, uh, I'll, I'll just say one bit, thanks. Uh, Brian, on your little quick comment there, I haven't made any comment about only two quotes, it's because it's under £10,000. It's actually under £1,000, but it's actually under £1,000. Okay. So let's move on. So, um, what, are we going to do? what do we want to do with this one? Do we want to put a non-lead replacement? Well, I propose that to the chairman, I think Jerry yeah. seconded it. So which one you have, you have the two choices then. So do you want to go for the, um, the actual non-lead replacement flashing, which is £950, or do you want the render finished in grey, which is £850? I think this is a subject on which I have no expertise, and I'm prepared to take off some advice. Um, yes. one, one second, there's Andy would like to say something. Andy? Just, you know, we've had an issue with this in some rental property that I've got recently and uh, we tried to go down the render route and that actually caused more damp problems because the render itself became damp. I would suggest going for either a lead replacement or the fiberglass that uh, Brian mentioned. That, that worked quite well for what we did, so avoiding lead. Yeah, and uh, Ed would like to say something? Ed? Uh, hi. Yeah, I, I think why the lead was seen because it looked like lead. Um, I lived in a property that had a flat roof with a lot of lead and basically it was painted. Yeah. So it was painted with snow sand, uh, a water, another covering, so it didn't actually show as lead unless you really went and scored it with a knife. Um, so, and what did you do? Okay, that, um, it's come up with the suggestion that we could, whether it's lead or, or a lookalike lead or a or a substitute not being led. Ah, with with the uh, with the uh, sorry, I'm sure. With the uh, fiberglassing, you generally can get about a ten-year guarantee on them as well. So it may be a bit more expensive, but and it, it definitely doesn't look like lead. I'm just wondering whether or not um, we could quickly sort of get a situation where uh, the chairs decide on if another quote comes through, um, whether or not they could do it for fiberglass. The photographs is horrendously more expensive, then they could determine it. But obviously, you want to get something done. But I think photographs may be your, may be your best bet. 
Um, I also had a situation with a bit of a problem, and the photographs really worked really, really, really well. Uh, um, just before you come in, Tom, um, Keith was uh, wanting to say something. Keith? You've got his hand up. Just throw your hand up, Keith. Okay, Tom, what would you like to say? Can you okay. hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> Go on then, Keith. Yeah, yeah right, good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the fiberglass is an ex ex excellent option. I've got it on both of my dormers, and it's got a 20 year guarantee. Now, when you consider that, that's a long time. With the lead, you can get what they call smart water put on the product, which makes it unsellable if they take it in for scrap. But mm. that's just a thought if you want to look at that or look into it. But um, fiberglass is very good. It depends who you go to. And as I say, 20 years guarantee is not this Okay, thank you, Keith. And Tom? Thank you. Uh, one of the things which I uh, see with the different solutions is Andrews mentioned painting it in the lead. Either the lead is actually much cheaper, and if it's a uh, painting is a cheaper option, what can we go for that and the paint it? Thank you, Tom. Lead, lead is actually the, the most expensive option on there. Now, what, do you have fiberglass or all the fiberglass? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't got quote for fiberglass. Could I suggest then that we get a quote Five glass, um, and then do it by chairs pro vault. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 The more questions, the more questions. 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 The more for the same span, because this is what makes it very difficult uh, for councillors who are not quite familiar with building. Uh, they, they, there should be a little tiny little specification done, and they should all be quite in the same yeah. in shape. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a proposal that we um, uh, quickly go back. No, we should be back now. Can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah, so get a fiberglass quote um, and then the final decision by chair's approval. Okay, so uh, if you, you propose that, Brian, who'd like to second it? No, I'll second it. Second by Keith. Those in favour? Um, and 
now and then at no charge, which would have been, I think, is it fifteen hundred pounds? Was yeah, yeah. yeah. I just find that yeah. it's, um, it's if they're not doing. Okay. Lost again? Yeah. We're back, hopefully. Yeah. My, my, my comment was that regardless of what they said that they would do for free, is well, that's their prerogative. All I'm saying is that if we're not using all the rooms so much, or all the centres so much, why are we paying full amount for cleaning? As we are in a lockdown. Presumably they're not doing anything to the skate bar. That's been shut for an hour long. I don't know on that one. I, I don't know either. Graham, that's a Graham question, I think. We um, initially, I know they were doing because the, the until we had that new floor input uh, outside the, the front doors to the skate park, the, the, it was getting really, really dirty every time we used the containers. So they did do a period of deeper clean. But yeah, I think it's a reasonable point. We, we're still going in there and viewing CCTV and using it as a base for some of our outreach. But no, we haven't got a footfall of a lot of people going in there. So, uh, we we'll And the only other thing, you've got an um, inkjet printer. Is that inkjet printer ink? Or in, you've just bought a new inkjet printer for 89, 98 pounds? Uh, that is to replace the inkjet printer in the office here, which came up a ghost. Yeah. So, inkjet is there any possible paper? Yeah. Just, I shouldn't think it would be very long. No, no. They make money out of the ink, but... Yeah, yeah. Actually, they are. Yeah. Those, yeah. Those, yeah. Those, yeah. Those, those, yeah. The ink cartridges that those ones use are quite cheap. Um, they're not as expensive as like bigger yeah. laser jets, but it is just your basic old standard printer. But yeah. And sorry, the last there is last two two more um, questions. One is the on the back on the D1. You've also got a HP laser jet yellow. So it's three hundred and twenty-five. Yeah, feet. that's for the big our big printer which does all the colour. That's a laser but jet. I, I, I thought that. the contract. Yeah. 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 We're back. We should be back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Sorry. 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 Bit is um, with package support additional hours October to December and with sort support package January to April and you've got a total bill there of five hundred and fifty-five pounds plus that. Yeah. What was that for? That's uh, Matt that maintains the our website. Yeah. 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 But is additional hours? Boy, yeah. Because to do additional hours. He's had to do additional hours because. As we obviously are putting a lot more stuff on our website, especially due to COVID and all the, you know, all the, um, whereas before we were just sending the agenda and the draft minutes, now we're having to send in all the documents and so they all need to be uploaded and, so yeah. And you've been the whole pack. Yes, everything has to be on. One again. <laughs> No, we'll, we'll get our net. I'll look at our net to look at it, and um, I think we'll send that microphone back. And I think we might need to invest in a new um, camcorder. No, to be honest. And then the last thing. We... No, that was three hundred and something. I think the actual um, camcorder that we've had for several years now. And the last one is on the um, 14th of the 12th, Tom Harris removed the replaced patio area of Bayless Court. Yeah, that's the, I um, that, remember that. That was the name of the guy that was that's the amazing. contract. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, that's it. That's all my questions yeah. on, on that. Anybody else got any questions on the payments? Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah, I've got one, Chair. What's that? Yeah, uh, on 1031, a boiler repair for £282. Do you know what that one was broken down as? The, uh, as I say, the boiler breakdown. Yeah, I think it's, it's Sharon in the room. That they, that we're going to do no, it, it's not. It's not us. It's not the room. It's the technology. Unfortunately, bear with me. I can tell. I'm just looking it up on the uh, there. No, the top here. I presume it's a gas boiler, is it? It is to supply and fix spark electrodes and burn a gasket following reports of no hot water. And how old is the boiler? Quite a few years, I think. So that was a warranty, I take it? Oh yeah, yeah. If it was in warranty, believe me, we would be there on that one. Right. I mean, it does sound quite high, but, um, you know, Obviously, it's uh, been done, so we might pay to review in the future. Sadly, Keith, on commercial boilers, you, your warranty is one year, but the same boiler you can put into a domestic, and it's ten years. Yeah, yeah. yeah it depends. If it's serviced regularly every year, some of these boilers now, they've got a ten-year warranty. but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's why I asked about the age of it, but, um, but yeah, it, you know, it does sound, I, I wondered if that was including the annual service or gas safety certificate. We do get all that done anyway, annually, so yeah. But that wasn't included on that price there? No. No. Okay, all right. Can I just make a comment? Yes, Terry. Tony, I'll, I'll just come back to a comment that you made also um, before about the... Um, the local grass cutting, etc. And I did notice when I was out and about in one of my walks that the grass is being cut, but the sort of nettles and everything else that are uh, along this, the walls are not, don't seem to be getting done. Yeah. Yeah, we will be on that one next year, I assure you. Okay. Yeah. So do they not do that? Do they not do that at the same time as cut? Because they have cut the grass. I don't yeah. think. They've done their last cut for this season, I think, because it's going to be paid for the month you know. um, <coughs> But we will definitely look at that once they start again in the spring. Because okay, thank you. I have to cut, but it's not been you know, We will definitely look at that. Okay, right. thank you. Move on, move on, move on. Um, so we've, uh, we've approved this, have we? We go. Because uh, for the yeah, piece. Second there. Tom, I think, was first up with his hand. Sorry, John. Uh, sorry, not Tom, uh, Ed. Those in favour? Thank you very much. Right, the uh, next one. Uh, to deal with miscellaneous matters. Uh, to consider revisiting the decision made on the... Why not? Okay. Right, it's... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's uh, 13.1. Um, uh, it's to... Um, but, we need to change the policies first, don't we? Before we go down. You want to do the, the others first then? Yeah, we, we go to 13.2 first. Uh, policies, procedures. Um, first of all, there's the adoption of the Bradley Stick Town Council Tree Management Policy, which uh, 
This is this is what Uber, um, Dale has drafted and used from her when she was in Armour's break. Yeah. Um, and we don't actually have a tree management policy. We do carry out tree surveys and we have risk assessments, but we haven't actually got a tree management policy, so we thought it would be prudent to have one. So this is just the draft that similar to the one that they have in Armand's Bray with few alterations made more relevant to us. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Can I? Ed here. Oh. Sorry Tom, just for a second. Ed first and then yeah. Tom. A couple of quick points. I've read it through thoroughly. So referring to section two, paragraph four. Uh, where it says that the work in progress has to have their public liability insurance referring to be on the land. Uh, it should be referred to the job because to access a tree you may not be on Bradley Stoke Council land, you may be on someone else's land with their permission. Therefore, your certificate must cover the job. Point. Um, Next paragraph, I don't understand what is a healthy relationship without definitions. <laughs> uh, unless you're dealing with me and it's toxic, but never mind. Over the page, I suggest that the second point of the dot, uh, you've already have removed dangerous, therefore I would add the word to repair damaged limbs, because that can be done by bracing or tape. So I think there's the aspect of that. Otherwise, um, yeah. Um, on the top. So where it says remove dangerous and damaged limbs, you put remove or repair. Did you say? Yes. Because this, this methods of repair of limbs so that they're bent or twisted. Um, you know. So. So that one where you said about the tree surgeon carrying out any work, so would we just have on behalf of the town council then? Yeah, if you the gate with them, we just expect them to have the insurance cover and we don't we don't tell them how to treat a tree, we don't tell them where you stand to do it because trees are all different shapes. But yeah. the, the point of law is you, you may have a piece of land with a boundary where part of the tree goes over it. So without suggesting you can only touch areas which is in it's ridiculous. So just call the job. So and um, would you prefer rather than healthy relationship we had good working relationship? Yes, much better. I know it's terminology but it, it's staying within the realms of what we understand. Thank you. Okay, so um, now that we changed the uh, the uh, tree policy, we happy with that. To yeah, right. we don't like the yes, and yeah. the, last, the last bullet point on three: remove branches or trees to prevent access to squirrels or birds. Uh, I've yet to see a tree that a squirrel cannot get up. Squirrels are very, very articulate. And they'll jump, they'll, you know, almost fly through the, through the air uh, to go from one tree to the other. So I don't quite know where that one's coming from. That's the dead Can you prevent a bird? There's pigeons as big as turkeys going around. Bradley Stoke at the moment. <laughs> Have a look at the Willowbrook. You'll see them on the roof. Thank, thanks, Keith. Andy would like to say something. I think so. Relating to squirrels, I think it was just if the trees are, for example, up the side of a building, it allows them access directly into the roof spaces, etc., and get in for tables and damaging things like that. Oh, they've got the building anyway if it's rendered, or uh, they even go up a pipe, like a rat will. Like a rat up a drain pipe. There you are, that's an old saying. Uh, Tom, you wanted to say something? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, councillors, for their input. Okay. One of the things I just want to point out, because Dell, I think, is in the meeting. 
It should be noted that the town council does not carry out works on privately owned trees. So I think the other one, the word wordings which we already have, the town council will uh, sorry, oh, what is that? You know, regarding that uh, insurance thing, you know, it's it can be. It, we are only doing looking after the property trees in our own land, isn't it? In mm. work on town council mm. owned and maintained land. Yeah, but Keith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Keith was saying um, uh, that to access. Oh, whoever, sorry, whoever it was said it. Uh, it, uh, yeah. it um, they would potentially have to get the permission to, for uh, somebody else who wasn't our land to enable them to do the work on our land. So that's why it said that. So, yeah. I think I'm right in saying the law says that if you cut down a branch on a tree. Gone again, Mike. Um, gone. Uh, is it Ed? Ed's my gone, isn't it? You can no. chop it off and throw it back. Is that yeah. what you're saying, Michael? Well, well, hand it back would be the word I would yeah. use. Yeah, yeah. Please offer to do so. Um. So, hello. Yeah, Tom, do you want to say something? Okay, I thought it would be better to hear from the person who drafted it. Um, Dell, that's one of the points which I otherwise, you know, with that amendment, I'm very happy yeah, that. In, uh, hey. You can make a few comments if you like. Hi, um, yeah, that policy was amended by Sharon. I haven't actually got a copy in front of me. I know what the original, original one said. Um, it was actually tailored for a completely different area with lots more trees and tree preservation. Orders. And I can't actually remember any part about squirrels, so I'm really interested to find that part. They wouldn't have added it in. I wouldn't have added anything in about yeah. preventing access to squirrels or birds, because I'm afraid they got squirrels. I think it's yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last bullet point on three, Odell. Well, I haven't. I haven't got a copy, but I'm going to get one. Yeah. Like, on the back, the last bullet point. Remove branches of trees to prevent access to squirrels and birds. And well, was, well, you might actually, you might actually conflict with the Wildlife and Countryside Act on the birds as well. I have a copy of the Armsbury Parish Council Tree Management Policy here, and it does say you remove branches or trees to prevent access to squirrels and birds. Uh, <laughs> I think you remove every tree in the area. Okay, can we move? Sorry, Del, would you like to say something? Okay. Can we move on then? Can we just agree that we've deleted that last no, that yeah. 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 Also, the yeah. section that Michael was saying about in common law, a property owner can cut back overhanging branches to the boundary of their property. The town council would usually have no objection to property owners carrying out tree work or engaging yeah. a contractor. That's on four, but uh, yeah. I think that's more or less what you were saying, Michael, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. it was. Then we've got to throw the branches back onto the other person's property, though. Hang them back, back. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you might throw it to a greenhouse. That is Brian's policy, is it? <laughs> no, that's legal. That's a legal requirement. You can't, <laughs> because otherwise you're stealing part of someone else's tree. You yeah. don't. You don't own the tree which overhangs your garden. It's just a nuisance to you, and you're allowed to cut it. Oh. And then you might shove it over their fence, but not go through their greenhouse and cause yeah, about twenty pounds worth of damage. I mean, regarding uh, Almsbury and their yeah. policy on squirrels, it's because I'm going to move on. Please do. Um, uh, uh, we'll move on to proposals. Yeah, I'll we'll propose it. Go on. Okay. Okay. Uh, Keith proposed. Mike seconded. Those in favour? No, Michael seconded. That's what I said. Very yeah. good. You said Mike. Oh, oh dear. Ryan, you in favour? Yeah, I think that's unanimous one. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Right, marvellous. We've got a free policy. <laughs> um, right, yes. Um, thirteen point two two. Dr. Lee and pay guide. Annual review, I think we could do all these together, I think. Maternity leave pay guide annual review, paternity leave pay guide annual review, and the shared parental leave and pay guide annual review. They have been reviewed by South Cross Council yeah. HR. They have a look at all of them to see whether any regulations have changed. I've just got one comment. Yeah. I've just got one. 
just uh, one comment. Uh, I noticed that uh, in these days of equality, for uh, maternity, a mother gets 52 weeks, which is a year, and the father gets two weeks. But that's why there's the shared parental leave yeah, one, because they can, they can share it between them, aren't they now? Yeah. Aren't we? You're not starting again, are you, Roger? <laughs> <laughs> what do do for a fortnight off, eh? I've got a year off now. Um, the other thing which I don't seem to have is the actual terms and conditions of employment. But the, the next matter oh, is... Can we just... I don't think we did a vote on that. Okay, okay. Yeah, do we want to vote on this this particular one? That, those various options, 13, 2.1 to 2.5. Who'd like to propose it? Yeah, I'll propose it. Uh, or, or our second Tom. Tom. Okay, Tom and Michael. Thank you. That's all right. Those in favour? Those in favour, yeah. Good question. Those against? Uh, oh, well against, is that? Are you still are you for or against, Mr. Franklin? Very poor. He's for, okay. Thank you. And no abstentions. Okay, move on. Review of the terms and conditions of employment. Um, do you do we is this do in light of potentially confidential information because I don't know what this actually covers, do we need to um, invoke standing order sixty nine and go into closed session and stop whilst if you invoke standing order silence. It's a staffing reference, is it? Yes, I said, um, can we have a proposal and a seconder then to go into closed session and to stop recording of the meeting in light of the potentially...